Now let's take you back to that incredible event when Felix Baumgartner did his skydive 24 miles to earth and broke the sound barrier. You would have assumed his heart was beating 10 to the dozen. According to his monitors though, his pulse at that point was actually slower than the average man's. Mm. When Felix made the leap, he was wearing a machine. Monitors, scientists know help, now help, will help them learn exactly how his body reacted as he fell. And Mulsoud is from the company that designed the equipment, Equivital. He's here to reveal some of the early results and show us uh, what uh, Felix Baumgartner was wearing. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. So you've got some information back very quickly, have you? Absolutely. We, uh, we got the first cut of results, very basic results from Red Bull uh, last night. There's obviously going to be about another two to three weeks of full analysis while they both analyse the results, review the results and get them verified by the accreditation bodies. So we'd be hoping to produce a lot more fuller results within about two to three weeks. On a basic point of view, we got data from two parts of his, his actual uh, pilot. So that was from the launch and also from the first third of his freefall. Um, what we found was actually quite, quite staggering and quite astounding. We saw that his heart rate during the launch phase was uh, averaging around 60 beats per minute. So, so as he was going off from, absolutely, from the so ground? Absolutely, as he was ascending yeah. from the ground. And, it, and his breathing rate was about 12 to 14 beats per minute. Now, if I can put that into some kind of context, for a 43-year-old person, a uh, male like Felix is, your average resting heart rate for a fit 43-year-old uh, would be around 60 beats per minute. Um, but Felix was actually carrying over 30 kilograms of equipment on his back mm -hmm. and was also, you know, obviously the adrenaline and the rush mm -hmm. and the pressure and the nervousness. And still he was able to maintain that level mm -hmm. of heart rate. So amazing physiology mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. um, when he actually got to the first third of his freefall, um, the, the first thing we saw was uh, his heart rate was uh, hovering between 160 and 180 beats per minute. That's actually including when he was spinning as well. Right. So the data from the spin was, was very useful as well and uh, something that everyone I know wants to, wants yeah. to hear about. And 180 is what a middle-aged man would get to during exercise. Absolutely. So yeah. you'd expect the maximum heart rate for someone of Felix's age to be about 180 for someone who's that fit. When um, people go out and do running or some exercise, they often wear a heart monitor. So this is, this is the one that you ha produced for Felix. This is the kind of thing that he would have been wearing. Absolutely. So um, he puts it on, he wears it around his... Uh, body and then what I mean is this uncomfortable for him to wear is it just another piece of equipment that he's well during the during the selection phase of actually which monitoring system which physiological monitoring system they would use um, they went through a number of different variants and and there were some key factors they were trying to make sure um, would be prevalent the first was comfort so they obviously of most utmost importance is that Felix would not have any obtrusive equipment that yeah. would stop him performing it's nice and soft. Mm. absolutely it's actually been uh, specifically designed so it's patented fabrics and te textiles so it's actually fit against um, the body and inside the the belt then you have these little monitors here what what do they actually measure is it just so, two of them or how many of them are there? no so it'd just be one monitor which mm, would right. click into just clip into there and that would fit into the pocket mm -hmm. uh, like so and um, effectively that on its in its own can measure um, clinical grade ECG so two leads of ECG ECG uh, ECG is basically the uh, heart waveforms so you know when you go to an ER you see okay. the, the the waveforms um, on the big monitors that would be your ECG yeah um, that that can give you heart rate it could give you breathing rate and breathing effort it could give you two different types of skin temperature it also has uh, internal triaxis accelerometer so it could give you body position body movement posture and um, from that that, then you could deduce a number of different indexes stress physical uh, fatigue um, activity fitness so you've worked out that he's cool under pressure yes <laughs> but the, presumably you want other information as well the particular stresses that his body was under well, but for other purposes well you? yes you, what you're looking at is you're looking at saying how do I contextualize this data now what that means is how do I combine the data that our systems are collecting yeah. with environmental data with equipment data and with other sensor data from around um, his, his shuttle and, and his spacesuit, so that you could get a true picture of how his body was transforming, adapting and performing right. in comparison to the, the different stresses and strains he was going through, whether that be breaking the, the sound barrier at 833 miles per hour or whether that be going through um, uh, launching and having the yeah. nervousness mm. of, of preparing for that launch. Interesting stuff. Amal, thanks very much. Thank yeah, you thanks very much. very much indeed. Amal Sood from Equivital. 26 minutes past seven.